Whether it's anime, manga, or any form of fictional content, one thing I always look forward to seeing is an epic rage moment. Seeing a character completely lash out, losing any sense of self-thought for the sole purpose of running somebody's fade will never fail to entertain me. I was scrolling on Twitter the other day and saw this question being asked. Which type of rage moment is the best? Now I thought to myself, what do you mean? There's different kinds of rage moments? And of course, the two types of rage moments in question are berserk rage moments, where a character goes complete bananas and loses their mind as they they go on an absolute rampage, and silent rage moments where you know a character has completely snapped but they show it a little more indirectly, with things like expressions, mood, and the intensity they bring into the environment. So in honor of this thought provoking question, let's go through some hall of fame berserk and silent rage moments throughout some of my favorite anime. And without further ado, let's begin with a berserk rage moment. And when I say berserk, I mean both the moments and the first one I have to mention here with Guts' iconic scene during the eclipse. For the sake of keeping things PG, I won't exactly be describing everything leading up to this moment, I'll leave it as a if you know you know. Let's just say Griffith violates everybody in every way that you can imagine. Enraged by seeing his comrades fall and what Griffith is doing to Casca, Guts tries to free himself from a demon biting on his arm. And we see his rage push him so far to the point where he uses his broken sword to free himself from the demon's teeth. I can't think of another moment that displays this level of persistence and desperation to such an extent. To keep clawing away with the odds of victory being non-existent and the delivery of Guts' emotions and screams is just a chef's kiss. Well, in regard to the rage moment, everything that led up to it, bad. Continuing on the topic of Berserkers, how could I not mention some Dragon Ball home to some of the greatest rage transformations out there? My personal favorites in this category would have to be Goku unlocking Super Saiyan and Bro. No specific moment, just Broly. Goku's first time transforming into Super Saiyan isn't just an amazing rage moment, it's up there with some of the greatest moments in fiction. You know how it goes, everyone thought Frieza was defeated, hit hit hooray, then boom, plot twist, he's still alive. Krillin gets turned into a firework, triggering Goku's intense emotion and willpower in one of the sickest ways possible in the rest is history. Plenty of screaming, and history. As for Broly, it really doesn't matter which version we're talking about here. One thing that's always been consistent about his character is that he is the berserker of all berserkers. A walking, talking, ticking time bomb, somewhat cemented on the Mount Rushmore more of the one crash outs. During the Broly movie, the man showed us the true meaning of on site. Anyone in Broly's field of vision was catching them hands, he even tried to fight Whis. He had to be KO'd before he destroyed himself from blindly raging out so hard in the fight against Gogeta. On a similar note, let's transition into Vasto Lord Ichigo in Naruto vs Pain. When these two emerged on the battlefield, it was like predators hunting their prey, and I'm not referring to Hisoka. I'm talking straight ruthless kings of their domain, just some absolute demons acting purely on instinct leaving a trap of mass destruction. For a character to lose themselves in their emotions is one thing, but a full-on monster-like transformation like these is exactly what Berserk Rage moments are all about. Like sure, it's amazing to see the intensity of a character's emotions on full display, but it's also nice to see them completely lose their minds, becoming a completely different version of themselves, or something that isn't even them in general. Which leads to my next topic of discussion, Dark Sonic from Sonic X. Now Dark Sonic's rage moment and transformation was very short-lived thanks to Dr. Eggman, but my golly, even just the glimpse of it was chilling to the core. What's so moving about this moment, aside from it just being really cool because it's unhinged Sonic, is that he's typically portrayed as this laid back chill character. Even during intense moments, he's usually the one to keep his cool. So to see him show such animosity, even for a brief moment, has left its mark on the Sonic community. You just know how bad things could have turned out when Sonic's main enemy had to give him a talk no jutsu to snap him out of it. Sorta of reminds me of the time in Mob Psycho when Kageyama sees his house on fire. As he rushes inside trying to to tell himself that everything is all right, we see his percentage slowly rising as he slowly comes to terms with what's going on. Right when he sees the dummy bodies thinking it's his family, the 100% jumps right up to three question marks. That's right, this man's rage was beyond immeasurable. Similar to Eggman and Sonic, this is until Dimple assures him that the bodies were fakes and everything was still okay. A body that wasn't fake though was Kites, which is the spark for THE Gone moment. This was a bit of a mix between Silent and Berserk, as everything leading to the transformation was Gone acting cold and distant, holding in all that rage until he finally snapped. The build up to this moment was executed flawlessly, as we saw Gon slowly disregard his morals and humanity until he became a bigger monster than Marowim. Just like Goku Super Saiyan, this is basically the blueprint for all things great about rage moments. Hold on, right before we move 
Lana had to pop in from the future for a bit. How could I possibly forget Obito here? After witnessing Kakashi unalive Rin, this man went on a massacre. I'm talking an absolute bloodbath. A big portion of this moment had to be off screen. Him holding Rin's body, declaring that he's in hell, has to be one of the most jaw-dropping moments in the whole Naruto series. But enough for me from the future, let's get back to the video. But they don't always have to explicitly involve overwhelming anger like this. Sometimes all it takes is a shift in mood, a shift in intensity for that same level of hype to be reached. This is where we get into the silent rage moments, and who better to start this with than Zenitsu in the Infinity Castle. From the start, Zenitsu was always two things, a coward and a simp without a backbone. His whole gimmick is that he only gets serious whenever he's sleeping or unconscious, otherwise he's a goofball throughout most of the series. However, upon learning what happened to his master and fellow disciple, everything had changed. Zenitsu at this point had completely flipped the switch. He was locked in, he had a purpose, he had some swagger to him for the very first time, and this is all why he was awake. Speaking of switches flipping, it's kind of ironic how Luffy is on the silent side of this debate, or on the silent side of anything. Him clocking Charlos in the face is just one of many Luffy moments where everything about his personality is temporarily absent. In place of his silly, goofy, laid-back self, we see an absolute savage of a pirate, which is probably how most people in One Piece view him. Whether it's him walking past Kaido and Big Mom to Kinemon, the walk to Arlong Park, he's got some of the best silent rage moments in all of anime. All I gotta say is that I'm waiting for a moment like this with Gear 5. I want to see a little less tomfoolery, but anyways, let's move on to Saitama versus Gaara. This is one of the first moments where we really saw Saitama flip the switch, and I think the execution was perfect. Like, sure, we could have seen him raging out with intense anger, blood boiling through the roof, but cold-blooded demeanors like this bring a whole nother level of intensity to fights, especially with the fact that he was more upset at himself than anything else, which justifies a reaction like this. See, a big part of these silent rage moments is that they usually involve a character coming to terms and slowly coping with the harsh reality before them. With all hope lost, the only thing they can do at this point is let off some steam against the ones who caused it. Take Yuji versus Mahito for example. Shibuya was the major turning point in Yuji's character. After losing numerous friends and allies and Sukuna putting plenty of blood on his hands, he essentially reaches a breaking point. He comes to realize that he's a cog in a machine, someone no different than Mahito. He comes to see that he's just a being willing to kill on pure instinct as he proceeds to walk down Mahito and nearly end him. Again, what makes these scenes so powerful isn't just how the rage is displayed, it's the evolution of how it's created, the development of character before our very eyes. Some of my favorite silent rage moments come from the dark tournament in Yu Yu Hakusho. You got Hiei being as cold as ever, ironically whipping out the dragon of the darkness flames straight up eviscerating another flame user. Whenever a character's bloodlust is very subtle yet still visible at the same time, that bloodlust is amplified tenfold. Yusuke's final awakening against Tagoro is a perfect example of what I described earlier. His coming to terms with the loss of Genkai and Kuwabara who he thought was gone at this point and just letting loose as that's all he could do from that point. But these silent rage moments don't always involve a hidden sense of rage. Take Levi versus the Beast Time for example. No words were spoken, just a straight up silent fade. Shanks saving Luffy from the Sea Beast spoke volumes without any speaking even involved in the first place. Hisoka threatening Kilua to Illumi's face brought out one of the best depictions of visible bloodlust. Tanjiro looking positively awful against Muzan, if you know, you know. But the final silent rage moment I'd like to talk through is Team Gohan Super Saiyan 2. Obviously it involved the Berserker type rage, but I feel like the buildup is what's key here. The final snap that pushed him over the edge, the realization that an embodiment of good heart and nature couldn't be preserved by him. This transition into his new awakening is really the best of both worlds here, both berserk and silent. When it comes to both of these types of moments, I wouldn't say one is significantly better or worse than the other. Each has their own unique way of displaying these raw emotions. How characters cope with their worlds falling apart before their very eyes. But let me know which rage moments you like best, and if there's any that stand above the rest to you. There's plenty I didn't mention in this video, and there's probably more types of rage moments that you could further elaborate on. But that's about it for this video. If you enjoyed, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and check me out across my platforms for more content. And keep tagging me in these interesting interesting topics of discussion and let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to cover. But that's about it for this video. If you enjoyed, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe or I'ma have a rage moment of my own. I'm just kidding. But seriously, if you enjoy my content, be sure to check me out across all my platforms. The support's been amazing lately. I can't say this enough. I appreciate each and every one of you watching this video, interacting with all my stuff. But anyways, that's it from me and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.